Green My Favela started at the request of a community leader in a favela called Hosinia, which is in Rio's south zone. It coincided with the beginning of Rio's uh, UPP pacification campaign, which is about putting police units in the favelas to try and wrest control away from the drug trafficking gangs that have traditionally controlled the favelas for decades. So I began working in Hosinia before the pacification campaign. Working with Green My Favela has allowed me to have a unique window to see the pacification campaign unfold through the process of work to establish gardens with the community. The project started in 2011. We've made about 12 gardens, some of which have survived and some of which have collapsed due to various reasons, security reasons, governance issues. Others have continued and changed ownership to different parts of the community. Some are still governed by the people that began them. The process that we work with is uh, very fluid and organic. It's an informal project and we work through beginning to take actions and through the action of working, the community can see that their work can transform space. Manguinhos is in the north zone of Rio, about six kilometres from the city centre. It's a cluster of favelas, which is uh, about 15 communities all living together, and about 50,000 people. Before this space was a garden, it was, uh, it was a garbage dump with a large cracklandia on top of it. This project is less than a year old and we were invited, we were introduced to the Hortus Cariocas program which is a part of the uh, Department for the Environment, the Municipal Department for the Environment and we were asked to uh, come in and establish a part of this very long kilometre long garden space uh, that's dissected into three spaces by soccer fields. Uh, so we came into this uh, end of the space where we have 48 garden beds each 10 metres long to start making a garden. The idea of public space in a favela is very foreign, it's very new. People traditionally have uh, exploited public space in the worst possible ways. There's, uh, living in a favela there's very little uh, trash removal, there's state abandonment, so you don't have any infrastructure. You don't, you, everything is self-made and so people tend to spend their time and their money on the inside of their places and there's also security concerns. So the idea of respected and shared public space, especially public space that isn't locked up and secured, is very, very foreign. So what we try and do is just come in in this very sort of informal way and begin a process of saying, hey, well, if we try this and you try this with us, what do you think might happen? And so initially the idea is very, that people hold is very cynical because they don't think that that's possible. But within a matter of a day, that all changes when they see the massive transformation that happens so quickly with the environmental space, the change in the environment. And the idea of working in Manguinhos started that way, in the way that all our gardens start, by just coming in and trying to remove the weeds, clean the trash, which is always the primary thing of what we do. And because we're working in this way, where we're working on a very physical level, not on an abstract meta level, and because we're doing the worst jobs, of picking up trash and that sort of thing which we remain committed to even after we step away from the gardening itself as the community governance takes over which happens very rapidly uh, then we our support lends itself in that way we only work with the community if they want us to and if they enjoy us being here and if we're not causing conflict i'm just coming in and picking up the trash and uh, yeah, planting seeds and providing tools and my communication is very physical and very basic. Uh, I'm not trying to translate any concepts beyond, you know, how do, how do we grow this plant and how should it be watered and how do we get this compost? Seeing the plants grow is my way of communicating. We work usually with foreigners living here in Brazil. I really like the exchange of service rather than the exchange of money as a model to work with. We do receive donations. In exchange for that we try to facilitate 
whatever the donor's wishes are, but those donor's wishes need to make sense for us to take the money in the first place. So if it's an academic grant, someone wants to come down and work on producing a garden with us, great. If somebody wants to give us some money to put in a mosaic, then we can do that as long as we've got enough money that we can provide for tools and basic services, hoses, water supplies, whatever else we need that we find is more a primary need. If there was a more rigid structure around it, it wouldn't allow it for, to be an adaptable model and it would lose its fluidity. I think there's this concept that just by a foreigner being here, you're somehow giving to the community and that's just not right. And let the community make the decisions, let the community make the rules. You don't need to impose all these guidelines, typically in a northern garden in particular you have uh, regular guidelines set out for the times how much you have to guard and the lock who gets the lock and the key we don't have any of that and it works much better for us if we tried to tell people what to do they wouldn't work with us and it's not our place it's their community so they should be making the decisions and we should be there to augment what their needs are rather than impose what our desires are typically we're working on a purely volunteer level as I said earlier with community members who have the motivation to garden and they have their own choices about whether or not they want to sell their produce or give it away. Um, interestingly enough in our garden here all the, all the gardeners want to uh, give away their produce. None of them have chosen to sell it which I find really interesting and they take real pride in the fact that they feed about 100 people from this garden. And people are stopping by all the time, getting their herbs, getting their vegetables. This project has, has use value almost immediately in several ways. For a start, you're making clean space. You're making space that has a safe water supply, which wasn't here earlier. You're uh, diminishing rat and vermin infestations. And you're alleviating poverty by offsetting people's uh, income. People working or living in favelas, if they are lucky enough to be able to work, are perhaps only earning as little as two, three hundred hay eyes a month. And this is an organic garden as well. So there's that nutritional value that's added because people aren't eating an overabundance of pesticides and it's accessible enough for everybody in the community and it's producing enough because Rio has the climate to produce all year round at a very prolific level. And each space is different, but typically the space is so degraded. When you think about this being a garbage dump with a shanty town on top, a lot of crack addicts and armed drug dealers and people getting shot and killed and chopped into little pieces and being fed to animals as a daily site when you walk out of your front yard compared to a garden it's really quick and easy to see how different that is and it's also easy to smell the difference and that's a big thing especially that the kids say to us they always say that they couldn't walk out of their house before because it smelt so bad and they were scared and a lot of the time they try and find alternative ways out of their house because they couldn't walk out of the front door but now they walk out and they can play in the garden they can be part of the garden they've got something else to do other than try and avoid public space. They're actually invited into it.